Hello. Um, I'm trying this thing out. Um, I haven't done regular videos in a long time. And I do think it's important for me to think, especially about big topics that I've been chewing on for quite a while. And the best way I know how to continually think about things, um, or at least exercise myself uh, mentally, um, is to talk verbally, out loud. Um, and just to do that solo can be... Can look a little crazy, uh, me talking to myself in a corner about random things that just looks nuts. Um, so I want to open it up. I want to bring in anyone really. It's the internet. Anyone can weigh in. I want to create dialogue, essentially create discussion, create solution, create discussion. Um, and so things that I'm looking at. Um, everyone knows that recently the Gillette commercial came out um, and so I want to spend the next few minutes um, discussing what I thought has come up uh, with those essentially um, the whole commercial uh, from what I've been able to gather around everyone in my own watching is that it was a discussion trying to be started regarding toxic masculinity I think it's a fair judgment within the first two seconds of the, the commercial uh, sexual harassment uh, toxic masculinity um, were both said and so it was framing the whole commercial around those few words that were said in the beginning there um, so I was trying to chew on the whole thing wanted to understand it more uh, and the question and then of course questions started coming to my head what is toxic masculinity is one of the questions I have or I should say had and so I wanted to understand what is considered what what people consider toxic masculinity right I think everyone kind of understands what people are insinuating when they say toxic masculinity um, and just for um, my own sake here if I were to define toxic masculinity, although I think it's a false um, framing of the word, but if I were to define it, essentially it would be a behavior that is um, societally considered masculine that is detrimental to the individual and those surrounding them. Um, and that would probably be the easiest um most simple definition I could make for toxic masculinity um, reasoning why I would say it doesn't exist though would be because with uh, the definition of masculinity itself now there's quite a bit of debate of what is masculinity um, and so and to insinuate that uh, there is toxic masculinity opens up the idea that masculinity isn't a single goal for men to achieve or to work for um, rather, it's a spectrum of where all men, quote unquote, it's 2019, <laughs> um, <laughs> where they all lie on this um, spectrum that defines all of masculinity. And on one end is toxic masculinity, the other end is masculinity. Um, it's, but you could easily just say, well, the one in is masculinity and the other end is not masculinity, which is kind of where I'm leaning towards. It's if it's not under the umbrella of the the term masculinity, then it, it wouldn't be toxic masculinity because toxic masculinity in the same way that there is parts of masculinity that are detrimental to the individual. Um, but generally behaviors that I've noticed that have been, are considered toxic masculinity um, are not only in men um, and obviously um, there are traits that are considered masculine that um, females obviously um, have as well or can have I should say it's not generally um, possessed by trait these traits are generally possessed by f uh, women um, 
but in general gen, generalities um it's generally men um one of the well, I was interesting looking up some of the definitions of masculinity it's mis- masculinity itself right um and it was interesting reading what I did find there it was hard to find really just a flat out definition of masculinity um without getting into political answers um I mean, Wikipedia, the, the dictionary definition, um, uh, which was qualities or attribu- attributes regarded as characteristics of men, uh, qualities and, or attributes. So generalized um, qualities or attributes um, to men. Um, when you go to some, somewhere more like Wikipedia, which is more... Um, user generated for the most part. Um, I should, well, maybe not for the most part. That's, a, that's something else. Um, is a set of attributes, uh, behaviors, and roles associated with boys and men. It's a social construct. Um, as or say, as a social construct, it is distinct from the definition of male biological sex. Standards of manliness, masculinity vary across different cultural and historical periods. Both male and females can exhibit masculine traits and behavior. Um, traits traditionally viewed as masculine in Western society include strength, courage, independence, violence, and assertiveness. Um, I had a little bit of an issue with um, the traits traditionally viewed as masculine in Western society. Um, they mentioned strength, courage, independence, violence, and assertiveness. Uh, strength, courage, independence, and assertiveness, I would agree, are generally, um, well, maybe not independence. I wouldn't say independence is generally a masculine trait, necessarily. Um, but strength, courage, and assertiveness. Um, assertiveness... Uh, if you look at the the big five personality scale, um, there is agreeableness and disagreeableness. Usually, disagreeable people um, are fairly assertive, and men are overwhelmingly overwhelmingly more disagreeable than women generally. Um, same when it comes for, I guess that's I guess independence would fall under that. Then uh, independence would fall under closer to. Uh, disagreeableness rather than agreeableness courage and strength um, that's generally if I would say falls down from an evolutionary perspective um, just because uh, the biological differences in men and women uh, with men having uh, generally f- more physical strength um, so when it comes to actual physical warding off of either uh, wildlife or other people, um, men were generally uh, more capable of doing so. So, but when it comes comes to violence, and I guess that's where violence can sometimes be associated, but um, with masculinity, but I wouldn't say violence actually falls under the category of masculinity. Um, I understand if the uh, disagreeableness and or how the disagreeableness trait can fall into violence later on, but that comes more so into a character development um, and insecurity uh, understanding. Um, I think a lot of times when people start talking about masculinity and being toxic, they they assume um, that the the notion of who who said it. I think it was uh i think it was an article from huffington post if i'm not mistaken they can see if i can pull that up quickly but um essentially what they were saying is men are they generally have to um how you put it hold their emotions in essentially and not uh not understand have a hard time understanding what they're feeling um and I can see how that would be um, excuse me Um, I could see how that would be understandable because for some reason that resonates with me somewhat Uh, I don't know why entirely why that resonates with me but for some reason it does Uh, how there is a communication of 
um, the one to lack emotion, the one to be the one to be a uh, one without wavering of emotion, and so. <sighs> I apologize I'm doing this fairly late um, because I think that's when I can escape everything for a little while and just talk and understand things um, and so the way Huffington Post described it that they should be men should be uh, or so the society has constructed the way that men feel like they should be uh, macho brave strong watch football on Sundays and never show emotion that was what they said on this article here. Uh, I forget what is masculinity exactly. Uh, they're saying it right here. Uh, how they feel they should act. Oops. And if the computer, yeah. Basically, that right there. Um, so, it is definitely interesting um, why that resonates. I'm wondering, and this could be just total speculation. Um, but I'm wondering if that comes from the um, the the media type, the the cool guy, that the character that gets um, put out there a lot as the the cool guy, like the the Han Solo. I guess would be someone you could. That's someone who quickly came to mind. If I did some digging, actually, I probably could think of a lot more better characters for that role, but. Um, you know the cool guy that never has to that, that doesn't seem to ever be hindered by um, an emotional thing has everything under control there's no um, uh, visual um, cues that this individual is struggling with anything whether that be emotional or anything else uh, so that's kind of where that speculation of mine comes from for that specifically um, but yeah, uh, and that was kind of the going down the, the rabbit trail of what masculine, what, what masculinity I understood it to be. Uh, secondly, looking, uh, even looked at it biblically, um, to see what, uh, the Bible, someone had to say on masculinity itself. Right. Um, and what I saw was a passage in Luke seven, uh, 1 through 10, uh, the faith of the centurion. Um, and to put it briefly without reading directly from the story, but essentially um, when Jesus arrived at Capernaum, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, a servant was sent out to find Jesus and basically say, come, we need you to, uh, there's someone who's sick, his master is, is who is highly ma valued by his master. Uh, so, uh, from there, you immediately see that the um, someone who is serving a master is asking is being sent off by the, from the, from his master to Jesus um, to bring him there to heal him uh, because the master sees value um, or uh, sees value in his servant and. Uh, so once Jesus started making his way there, um, the man, the centurion, sent his friends out outside of his house to talk to Jesus for him. Basically, Jesus or the centurion was saying, "Look, Jesus, you're." Uh, I don't know what that was that fell behind me. That's kind of creepy, but um, essentially, what he was saying is that uh, I am not worthy to have you come into my house, um, and I am also a man of. Uh, of a th who uses authority um, people do what I say and what I say gets done so uh, you say that uh, the servant my servant will be healed and it will be done um, basically giving out a lot of faith on that and Jesus was quote amazed at him uh, that he had such faith um, and said that he has not seen his great faith. He has not found us, not found such great faith even in Israel. Um, and so the, the, the men were sent back to the house and found the servant well. So the moment they spoke to Jesus and told him that, the, the guy was healed. 
uh, where do I go with that? Um, essentially, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> um, the point of what that story is in th when tying with masculinity, right? Um, a man, a, a man who is a masculine man in the eyes of God, if you will, um, is someone one who has great faith. Um, a lot of the story is um, based on faith, and I found this. What was the name? Who's the guy that wrote this article? Uh, Malcolm Yarnell, with theological theological matters. Um, uh, what he was saying with it essentially was, um, I mean, I can flash the article real quick. Uh, this right here. Uh, what he was saying is, it's a lot of faith-based things. Um, and then faith is, uh, by definition, the belief in the things unseen, uh, believing in things unseen. Uh, and so, a lot of it's, um, faith, seeing those even who are under you as valuable, seeing, um, I shouldn't say, being able to handle power, um, in a way that is selfless, so selflessly containing power um, and then um, essentially building up the kingdom uh, around him because when uh, some of the elders who were sent to go find Jesus and bring him back was telling him look this this guy deserves um, to have you Jesus come heal his servant because he loves everyone and builds um Built, built the synagogues um, so someone who's able to um, one build the synagogues has money um, or I should say is successful powerful if you will and loves uh, our nation and so is selfless in that sense so someone who is a a, a biblical man a manly manly by the terms of biblical um they are selfless. They are um, not motivated by power, but they seek to obtain it um, for selfless reasons. So it's not it's not that they don't better themselves and better uh, their work ethic or work attitude. Um, they do that, and they do everything they do well. Um, because it's for furthering the kingdom um, and those around him. And so that was the interesting. So in, in conclusion to all of it, um, with toxic masculinity and masculinity varying, or saying there's a distinction between the two, um, I would suggest there is no such thing as toxic masculinity. Um, toxic masculinity is just the failed development of character in an individual um, that leaves insecurities um, which develop uh, self-destructive behavior um, whether that be uh, the sexual harassment type types that you see the um, sexually desperate the um, the violent uh, a lot of those, a lot of those, those behaviors that it's attributed to men, um, generally root back, or arguably generally root back to an insecurity. Um, for instance, with violence, uh, someone who is violent is insecure because they have to um, feed an insecurity of being dominant. They have to feel as though they're um, powerful. They have to feel as though they are. Um, worthy of taking heed to by others um, so they have to continually um, be violent with other people and long lasting that's not um, a long term solution by any means um, because there's always going to be someone bigger and more powerful that could end you so um, toxic masculinity quote unquote traits um because toxic masculinity doesn't exist, the traits that are associated with that are more so um, 
uh, lack of character development is what I would say. And so when it comes to what is actually masculinity, um, masculinity is the um, the goal at which a, a male should uh, strive to be more so. Um, so things like... Um, like what the, a lot of the Greek mythology stated. Let me pull that back up really quick. Like um, a lot of what uh, was being said with that. Of course, I don't have it right in front of me. Uh, that strength, courage, independence, and assertiveness. Um, things like that. Um, those are definitely good traits to go for, but I think what the Bible. Um, adds to that because the strength, courage, independence, and assertiveness, um, those are definitely good lasting solutions uh, from an evolutionary perspective. Um, they outweigh other options because they're long term and life giving essentially. Um, and I think you can only use those types of things um, if you uh, if you have good character and character is an interesting one I would like to actually dive into that probably at another date this video is getting kind of long I didn't expect I could t I didn't think I could talk for this long but here I am um, see so yeah, masculinity um, der derives from those things and is in uh, in conjunction with character and I think character has a lot more to do with it than uh, really anything else uh, in terms of masculinity because uh, if with good character those those masculine traits develop positively um, rather than degenerating away from mascul from being masculine and being more so um, immature would probably be a good way to put it uh, insecure immature um, so yeah so this is the first installment of uh, thinking. I don't know. Just named it on the spot. We'll see if that sticks. Uh, I'll see how regularly I can do this. I like doing this. I want to continue doing it. Um, and we'll go from there. See you all next time. All right.